may be seated. It is my privilege to call up the one who calms us down, the one who hasn't slept since March 16th, the one who worries day in, day out, how this shul will be better and works tirelessly to make it so, our president, Dr. Ellen Feit. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, I am exceptionally fortunate to have the most amazing people on my team for the betterment of Woodbury Jewish Center. I get to work with our clergy on a daily basis. Even before the beginning of the pandemic, Rabbi Food Handler engaged with our congregation in new and exciting ways and built relationships with us through programs such as Shabbat lunches for empty nesters, evening talks about Israel, revamping the religious school, and regularly visiting both the religious and early childhood programs. Both before and especially during the COVID crisis, he has liaised with the JCRC, UJA Federation, Sid Jacobson JCC, Mid Island Y, and the Interfaith Clergy Council, helping to put WJC prominently on the radar of these organizations. He started his popular Wind Down Wednesdays on Facebook Live, which regularly receives hundreds of views. He also started Tat Shabbat on Facebook Live for our little ones, along with the very popular Exercising with the Torah. He pivoted immediately during the pandemic to virtual Shabbat programming and leading Zoom Minyanim. Due to his efforts, our Zoom services, Facebook Live events, and YouTube channel recordings have reached people from all over the country. In fact, we're now the top Google search for Zoom Minyanim. Rabbi was instrumental in aiding the transition to live streaming and planning for these high holidays, working closely with the cantor to plan our abbreviated and meaningful services. He researched production companies and initiated our partnership with Waterworks to make our live streaming holidays as spiritual and uplifting as for those attending in person. Of note, we got over, over 800 views for our Rosh Hashanah services, translating to potentially 1,600 to 2,000 individuals watching our services. Within the breaks of our services, Rabbi has taught extremely interesting Zoom classes that I hope you had the chance to partake in. Rabbi has truly steadied our ship as we navigated these uncharted waters of this coronavirus. I and we cannot thank you enough, Rabbi. Sorry about the Kanish losing to the bagel. Never bet against Cindy Maddy. Speaking of the Rabbi and food, I want to express our gratitude to Ken and Erica Whitover for sponsoring the Rabbi's wonderful installation celebration last October, attended by over 500 people. Thanks to Michael Cohen, Brian Rayani, Charlie Polyakoff, Mindy Smolovitz, Michelle Maltz, Michael Lubman, Brian Foreman, Andy Lagnato, and Cindy Maddy for helping the Widowers make it happen. It was just wonderful and a sign of great things to come. Cantor Cohen has been a friend to me and my family since I have been a member here, and over the two decades, I've seen and experienced the deep and warm relationships he has developed with our members. He has been invaluable in maintaining the connection with you during the pandemic, and I know people were comforted when he reached out to them. He began his adult bat mitzvah class pre-pandemic and pivoted quickly to Zoom teaching once we shut down, and he did the same with his youth bar and bat mitzvah students. He taught well-received Zoom classes during the pandemic, including a class on Jerusalem and an evening with Shlomo Kralbach. He started a Zoom Havdalah service with Marlene and Haley and has a faithful group of participants tuning in weekly. He has recorded songs and read stories for our religious and preschool students, as well as holiday songs and prayers for the congregation. His annual Yom HaShoah program this year featured our very own Dr. Bill Rezelbach, who was a very interesting and engaging speaker. Thank you, Cantor, for providing continuity and love to me and to our congregation. I mentioned Kara Goldstein last night, but she deserves so much gratitude from all of us. As our treasurer, she really is the CFO of the WJC, and it is her strength and fortitude that has kept our books balanced during the pandemic. Her financial acumen, as well as her ability to get things done, often behind the scenes, is why we will be in a position of strength with your additional help in the coming years. Years ago, I asked her to read a random half Torah when I was ritual co-chair, and next thing I know, she's been the treasurer going on four years. I am lucky to call Kara my little sister and very dear friend. During the worst of the COVID crisis in New York, our Hesed committee, led by Adrian Roth, joined forces with Brian Rayani, and WJC Cares was born. 
We collected fun funds from you, our congregants, to help first responders and others in need. By pooling your generous contributions, totaling over $6,000, WJC Cares supported our local merchants and restaurants who were suffering the devastating economic effects of the pandemic. We bought their food and services and delivered them directly to first responders and frontline workers, including those of St. Francis and several Northwell hospitals, the Mid-Island Y JCC Food Pantry, the Syosset and Woodbury Fire and Police Departments, the FDNY Engine 5, and the Ronald McDonald House Charities, among many others. WJC Care sponsored a Mr. Softy truck, which served ice cream to over 500 employees at Cohen's Children's Hospital. Cohen's Children's Hospital, and a popcorn truck to feed employees at the Cold Spring Rehabilitation and Nursing Center. Within two weeks of our shutdown, to help connect our quarantine men and women and raise additional funds for WJC Cares, Brian started weekly online poker games, which just concluded, raising over $2,500. Thank you so much, Brian and Adrian. Additionally, we hosted a food drive in May with the Interfaith Clergy Council, Island Harvest, Legislator Josh Lafazan, and Elite Tent. Thank you, Dave Sakai, Brian, and Adrian. Dave Sakai has mobilized the Boys Club many times since March to deliver any goods needed to our congregants who were shut in during the strict quarantine, to deliver our early childhood families learning supplies while the school was shut down, and even to bring them yummy halas for the first Shabbat after Pesach. The Boys Club also reached out to our more senior members by phone to check in immediately after our shutdown, making sure to connect with those most vulnerable. Dave also kept in constant touch with our security services, mobilizing them when he needed, and he partnered with Homeland Security to assess our security status, as well as bringing us programming to secure our building, to maintain awareness of the ever-present threat of anti-Semitism, and Dave arranged CPR and AED training with the local fire department. Thank you, Dave, and thank you to the entire Boys Club. Adrienne Roth, our one-woman dynamo, additionally offered Facebook Live cooking classes where she made her delicious challah, chocolate matzah, and rugelach. That sounds so good now. <laughs> she also spearheaded free online yoga classes to help ease the stress during the height of the pandemic. Just in the last three weeks alone, she marshaled an incredible group of teen volunteers to package the over 500 Sweet Wishes New Year's gift boxes that were picked up by you. During the goodie box pickup, she, along with Paul Chaskis and Dave Sakai, handed out over 300 Maxorim so that those watching from home could live stream high holiday services along with those of us attending in person. Adrian also brought back a sorely missed annual WJC event, the Fashion Show, in November of 2019 that was very well attended, a lot of fun, and raised a few shekels for the shul too. Adrian, along with Debbie Phillips, brought us another hilarious comedy club night in February. Adrian also hosted, right before our shutdown, a wonderful author tea and book talk, featuring our very own noted author of the Grace Kelly dress, Brenda Janowitz, known to some of us as Bre Brenda Luxemburg. Adrian works closely with Robin Shore, overseeing the early childhood education program led by Cindy Common. COVID presented tremendous obstacles to our program in the spring, but with Miss Cindy at the helm, working with Robin and Adrian, we had a great start to our new school year, operating under strict pandemic protocols, of course, but enrolling close to 100 smiley-faced children, and we even have a wait list now. Thanks, Cindy, Adrian, and Robin. Paul Chaskis has been working with Arnie to keep our building well-maintained prior to and throughout the shutdown, and now for the holidays. A large portion of our roof was repair repaired, the outer doors to the sanctuary and ballroom were replaced, and all the floors downstairs in our classrooms were completely stripped, waxed, and polished. We also changed the entire building's air filtration system, not only to meet, but to exceed COVID guidelines. Additionally, since Paul loves food, he arranged to have kosher food establishments deliver weekly, freshly made breakfasts, dinners, and desserts right to our parking lot, both to support the restaurants whose business were suffering and to help congregants who could not venture far from home, and truth be told, who were also very sick of cooking for themselves. Paul, as, long, as longtime co-chair of the High Holiday Committee, he has basically served as master of ceremonies during these holidays too, and worked incredibly hard behind the scenes to organize the services, 
assign seats, and ensure that these very unique holiday services ran smoothly. Paul, I love you like a brother, and I thank you beyond. Rami Abada has been engaged with Israel Bonds to bring us excellent online programs that included a message from Prime Minister Netanyahu and Ambassador Dermer and an unbelievable concert from David Dior and Gil Shohat. He arranged a virtual cooking date with Chef Michael and Salichot at the Kotel and is working with JNF to bring to the religious school and the congregation a virtual bus tour of Israel, since unfortunately our congregational trip to Israel will be postponed. Rami is first vice president of the shul and a well-respected businessman in his, own, in his own other life, has been a strong sounding board for me, and as a tough Israeli, often tells it like it is. And since he knows I'm a wee bit sensitive, he's learned to sugarcoat, sugarcoat his critiques. Thank you, Rami. We also arranged to have three on-site COVID testing days for our congregants and staff. We have concluded our testing now, and I'm happy to report that over 50 people were tested and all were negative. Last week, we held the first of two outdoor flu shot clinics, once again, open to our congregants, staff, and the community. CVS vaccinated over 95 people in three hours against influenza. Next one is scheduled for this Thursday, October 1st, between 11 and 7 p.m. in the parking lot, in coordination with Josh Lafazan, and will be offered again to WJC and the community at large. Thanks again to Dave Sakai for working with Josh to bring us this next flu clinic. Speaking of health-related endeavors, I thank my Health and Safety Committee for helping me develop our reopening guidelines. Mark Firestein, Alan Maltz, Bruce Greenberg, and Hank Leibowitz. Brian Rayani also organized and moderated a free financial Zoom seminar which discussed employee and employer issues. Scott Matthews and Stu Mayer, among others, offered very timely expertise about the payroll protection program that was quite auspicious and very well attended. Michael Lubman followed this program up with a seminar entitled Emotional Wellness in the Time of COVID, which featured well-respected psychologists, a social worker, and our rabbi that was also very timely, needed, and well attended. Thank you, Michael. And I should mention Scott Matthews has been my other right-hand man, so I thank you for everything. Hopefully by now you have heard or met Kaylee Romick, our new Director of Youth and Family Engagement, she not only is teaching our Olive students, but she, I'm sorry, she's teaching our Dalid students, but she worked closely with Fran Perlman, our religious school director, to revamp our high holiday experience for our younger families. They put together excellent and well-received high holiday family services, as well as multiple class, classes and activities for youth of all ages. Another new hire to benefit our religious school is Ilan Kogan, our religious school engagement specialist. He is our very own Shin Shin. The kids will love his energy, enthusiasm, and programming. Thank you again, Fran, for pulling together our religious school virtual program in the spring and working incredibly hard to oversee our new and improved hybrid program this fall, whereby many grade levels will have one day of in-person instruction and one day of online instruction. Thank you so much to Gina Lubman and Randy Fogel for your steady guidance overseeing the Religious Education Committee and working closely with Fran and the teachers to make our religious school the best ever. And thank you to Charlene Levy, part of our admin team, for working with Fran on religious school operations and with Michelle Komatsu, our executive director, to oversee all synagogue functions. Speaking of Michelle, where would we be without you? You manage our synagogue with a calm demeanor. You are a tremendous asset in managing all of our communication, operations, and outreach, and in particular, coordinating all facets of our synagogue life and I so appreciate, appreciate how you kept us together during the height of the pandemic. Thank you seems trite, but it is heartfelt. This year marks the 20th year Sylvia Padron has been our bookkeeper, and we are so lucky to have her, as she is an integral part of keeping us connected. Thanks, Sil, and thanks for keeping chocolate kisses on your desk, although with COVID, you know I won't touch them. Much thanks again to my High Holiday Task Force, who helped me pull together these hybrid High Holiday services. In addition to the rabbi and cantor, I owe so much gratitude to Paul Chaskis, Jeff Fatchler, David Adelheit, Dave Sakai, Brian Rayani, Andy Lagnato, Rami Abada, and Michelle Komatsu. David Adelheit, in addition to the seating protocol he diagrammed and executed with his wife Phyllis and Leslie Levy, also produced our Yisker book and recorded the Yom Kippur Mincha. Every shul needs a David, and I'm so glad we have you. 
Thank you also to our cherished Boris Chartan for sharing his moving Ya Allah last night. And thank you again to Marty Pollock for recording Shahari as he has done for the last 33 years. Thank you to Jen, Jenny Maddy for recording today's Haftorah and Ziv Vinokur for reco recording Haftorah Yona. Thank you to our Yom Kippur readers today, Ken Lieberman, Debbie Phillips, Alexa Lagnato, Ava Lubman, Jessica Minsky, and the Cantor. And thank you to the legendary Michael Cohen for recording his show for service. Thank you to Zach Strominger for blowing show for last week as well, and to the Rosh Hashanah Torah readers, Sh Sasha Chernoff, Brett Hafkin, Molly Goldstein, Devin Fogel, Brandon Fight, Eve Waldhauser, Marin Hursley, Aiden, Cooper, Aiden, David, Aiden Davis, Cooper Davis, and Ava Rayhani. And thank you to Re Ricky Chaskis and Lisa Fight for chanting a beautiful Haftorah. Thank you also to Andy Lagnato, Dave Sakai, Dave, uh, Debbie Phillips, and Cindy Maddy for helping to usher our services. And to Debbie, another shout out for starting your Women's to Heal Him Circle on Sundays. Hopefully that will continue post-pandemic. February 1st, we had an amazing, an amazingly successful gala honoring past president Lori Weber that had over 450 people in attendance. And we're hoping to have another in-person gala as soon as it is safe to do so. Thank you to Tracy Rayani, Gina Lubman, and their gala committee of Lisa Sakai, Mindy Smolovitz, Rebecca Robedian, Nicole Shmuelov, Nicole Alstatcher, Monica Cohen, Marissa Strominger, Stephanie Abada, Holly Berman, and Nicole Polyakov. Thank you also to my amazing administrative board for your support of me and for reaching out to our congregants when they needed it most. Thank you to our past presidents for being my guiding, guiding light. Last names are not necessary. To Mark, Les, Ken, Abe, Robin, Marty, Paul, David, Cindy, Jeff, and Lori. Thank you. Thank you also to our maintenance staff who have worked extremely hard this past year, but especially now keeping us safe, clean, and disinfected. Arnie, you're wonderful, and thanks also to Pete and Brian. Last but not least, I thank Victor and Dolores Satami and Great Neck Games for not only the screens, but your generosity every single day to Woodbury Jewish Center. As Victor always says, whatever you need. You guys are amazing, and I love you. Please stay tuned for more wonderful programming in the coming year, virtually at first, and slowly and safely in person, hopefully soon. I thank you, our congregants, our WJC family, for con your continual support of Woodbury Jewish Center. I hope I've given you the sense of all the amazing things we've done before and during the pandemic. They couldn't be possible without your financial support and your time. I beg you to continue doing both, whatever you can financially, and however much of your time you can spare. Whatever you do is so greatly appreciated. And if I personally have hurt you in any way, or somehow I've forgotten to thank you, Mihila, and please forgive me. And thank you for listening to such a long speech. <laughs> Looking forward to better, safer, and healthier times for us all. Gamar Hatima Tova. Gamar Hatima Tova.